Hello everybody, this is Voodoo G, and you are watching the last episode of how to make hardstyle using only freeware. In today's video I'm going to talk about the bases I've made using Surge and the arpeggiator made in Odin 2, as well as some other little bits and bobs. Another thing I'm going to talk about briefly are the vocals and the vocoder. As you can see the arrangement is pretty much complete, so we're going to start with the arpeggiator and the patch in Odin 2. So let's start with the notes for the arpeggiator. The lowest note is exactly the same as that during the bass. The first note above the root note is a 7th chord and the three notes at the top are just a minor chord in the second inversion. And as you can see those are static chords. The arpeggiation is not being done via MIDI events but is being controlled by Odin 2 itself. So let's have a look at that. The patch for Odin 2 is relatively complex but nothing out of the ordinary. Active are three oscillator modules, three filter modules and all of the effects modules. And of course the arpeggiator, but we're going to get to that later. So let's talk about the sound generation. The three oscillator modules are an FM oscillator, a wavetable oscillator and a multi oscillator. The FM and wavetable oscillator both go into filter 1 and the multi oscillator goes into filter 2. The frequency of filter 3 is being modulated by an automation clip inside of waveform. So let's have a look at the modulation matrix. As you can see, there are three modulation sources that say ARP mod. If you look at the arpeggiator, you will see a bunch of knobs above the individual steps of the arpeggiator. Those are the modulation sources for the arpeggiator. This means if the arpeggiator reaches that step, the value of the knob from the modulation source you selected will be applied to the modulation destination. And if you have no idea what I just said, let me just simplify it by saying the value of the knobs that you can see there will be applied to the knob that you apply the modulation source to. So back to the modulation matrix. As you can see, the arpeggiator is modulating the filter frequency envelope, the filter frequency itself and the oscillator 1 FM amount. And the last modulation source that we've got is an LFO which is modulating the frequency of filter 2. Ok, so let's talk about the basses I've added during the verse. Both of those were made using Vember Audio Search. Oh really? If we are being honest, both of those are pretty much the same, only the second one has an extra modulator that modulates the cutoff frequency of filter 2 and the first modulator also modulates the rate of LFO3. So let's take a closer look at these sounds. We've got two oscillators enabled, both of them have different wavetables. Oscillator 1 uses the wavetable type cosine and oscillator 2 uses the wavetable type sine sync windowed. You can see the setup for these oscillators right here and if we click on the modulation source you can see how they are being modulated. So let's talk about the filters. We've got a low pass and a sample and hold low pass. LFO3 is modulating filter 1's cutoff frequency and on the second base envelope 4 is modulating the cutoff frequency of filter 2. As for the effects we've got distortion, chorus and a bit of reverb. Ok so let's talk about the last two new sounds I've added to this song. These ones sound a bit like the kick drum we've made in part 1 but reversed. But actually these are surge patches as well. What a surprise! And once again we're making use of a wavetable oscillator. We've got the sine octaves wavetable which has probably become one of my favorite wavetables ever. It is saturated a bit and its formant is being modulated by envelope 1. The second active oscillator is oscillator 2 and that one is a classic saw wave. The volume of oscillator 2 is also being modulated by envelope 1. Filter 1 is a comb filter set to about 100Hz and filter 2 is a high pass filter set to about 200Hz. Both of those are not modulated, they just give the sound a little bit of character. Last important thing to mention is the amp envelope of which the attack is set to 225 milliseconds. And in the effects chain we once again have a chorus and a bit of reverb. Now the last sound is basically a copy of the previous sound, except the envelope is inverted, so instead of fading in it creates a kind of a donk sound. Now the last sound design related thing I want to talk about is the kick drum during the chorus. We've made the kick drum in part 1 but I've changed it because it was sounding a bit too weak. 
So to change that I've doubled it up, tweaked the second one and layered them together and also put one of them with a shorter attack during the intro. And once again the tweaking of that sound was a little bit too boring to make an entire video about. Alright, so let's get to some of the other elements that I've added. As you can see, there are multiple vocal samples in this song now. One of them is made by me and the other one is recorded by Shell Music FX. I'm not going to go much into detail on the deep vocal effect, but I'm going to talk a little bit about the vocoder. Surprising to absolutely no one watching this video right now, this sound was also made using Vemba Audio Search. In my last video on Search, I showed you how to set it up as a vocoder inside of Waveform. I've used that feature to create this sound. The oscillator types for this patch aren't that important, they are just standard saw waves. So I'm going to take a look at the most important part, which is the vocoder itself. As you can see, we've got two sliders down here, which say min frequency and max frequency. These two faders determine the frequency range on which the 20 bands of the vocoder are being applied to the carrier. For this sound in particular, the min frequency is around 260Hz and the max frequency is around 7700Hz. On the last slot in the effects chain we've got a conditioner applying some compression to the sound. Now that being said, vocoder voices are not very delicate sounds. They typically require a lot of compression to be intelligible. Add to that a metric ton of EQing to highlight the formant and you're good to go. That is why there are so many effects on the two audio channels associated with the vocoder. So that being said, if you want to learn exactly how to create this sound, leave a comment down below because this will require its own video. Anyways, we have reached the end of the video. Congratulations, you now know how to make hardstyle using only free software. Good luck making your own track. If you want to show me what you come up with based on this tutorial, join my Discord server Wonders of Sound. You can buy the finished song on Bandcamp right now and I will upload the music video shortly. Until then, have an awesome day.